And uh, Jeremiah chapter 9 today, and we're going to look in verse 23, and we're going to read verses 23 and verse 24, and then I'll get into my message this morning. Thus said the Lord, it's always, it's always good when God speaks. It's always good when God is near. It's always good when God is praised. It's always good when God is glorified. Thus said the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth, glorieth in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, said the Lord. I want to preach a message entitled, God's Guiding Lights. God's Guiding Lights. I see some guiding lights here. Now, the word I pick up on that, thus said the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. What do we say? Glory to God. Right? We glory to God. Are we saying praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Right? So you can associate praising God and giving God glory. Okay? Right? You associate that. Now, praise, the Hebrew associates praise with an object. They do. And like I said in Sunday school, they got a northern light. And that northern light is bright. And that northern light has power to guide them. God gave him a cloud during the day so they could follow. God gave them fire at night so they couldn't travel at night. God gave them things to, so they would follow him. They could associate things. Okay, that's a cloud. Okay, the cloud's not moving right now. Oh, the cloud's moving. Pick up the camp. Time to move the camp. Cloud stays there. They stay there. Clouds move. They move. So they associate uh, something uh, with a light, a light that's guiding them. Okay? Associate a light that's guiding them. Now, I think it's very healthy for us to understand this when we come to these two verses in the Bible. A light that is guiding them. Okay? And I see very clearly out of this, out of this, out of these scriptures there is definitely some lights that are guiding. Well, God starts off not with what lights you should be guiding you, but what lights you should not let guide you. Because there are some lights that God don't want us, you know, to follow. There are some lights out there. Okay, he don't want us to follow. And he starts out with these lights right here. You, you, are, not, you are not be following. Well, the first light is, I find here, thus said the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. The wise man. Don't let him glory in his wisdom. You know, the wise man, that's exactly the light that he's that he's following. But the wisdom of this world is compared to nothing but the wisdom of God. There is wise men, and they're very wise, but yet they're foolishness to God. And these, and this, this wise man is following his wisdom. And he wants other people to follow him. He wants to be the light, and he wants people to follow him and follow his wisdom. 
Okay? And God said, don't follow him. He said, wise man, once you become foolish, so you can be, become wise. Why, why, don't you, why don't you cease in following your wisdom? I see a light. I see that light as the wise man. He said, glory. Thus said the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Then I see another man here. I see the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. This is the mighty man that is strong. The strong man glories in his strength. And his strength is what is guiding him through life. And he's trying to get other people strong. And he wants to, you get strong like me, you're going to have a good life. You get strong like me, you're going to have possessions in your life. You get strong like me, and everything is going to go just right. Be strong like me. Follow me. I'm a good light. Just like wisdom. Don't follow that wisdom. That guy right there. Me, I'm strong. I, I, I'm tough. I can handle any situation. Be just like me. And so there's a class of people, they may not be following the wisdom of this world. They may be following strong people of this world. But God Almighty says right there, he says, let the mighty man glory, it says, uh, the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. And if God doesn't want the rich man, the wise man to glory in his wisdom, and if God Almighty doesn't want the strong man to glory in his might, well, then I will not be following him. There's another man I find here. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Ah. Oh, it's not the wise man that I have to worry about. I can't follow that light. It's not the strong man, but it's riches. How many people are following rich people today and not God? The, 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 the rich man follows his riches. They, they follow it. He follows his riches. That's his light. He's following that light. And sometimes that light is bright. And sometimes that light becomes brighter because he gets greater riches. And the strong man's light gets greater because he's, he's stronger. And the wise man's light gets bigger because he's wiser. And these lights seem to get bigger as he develops more. And as he gets, you know, uh, uh, more people to follow him and he gets a bigger crowd and he's walking along and he's got a great big light. People are following. Don't matter how wise you are, you're going to stand before an almighty God. And it doesn't matter how strong you are or how rich you are. When you die, your riches go a dead. You, they don't go with you. When your strength, when you die, your strength leaves your body. And your wisdom leaves. You stand there before God naked. I would say God warned these people in Jeremiah's days. He warned these these, these people that were sacrificing their children to false gods. He was warning them, they, 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 these people that were living in adultery. They was doing every sin under heaven. They was living, the, these Hebrew people at this time, in Jeremiah's time, were, some of them were living wickedly and ungodly. And they was following the wise of the world and they was following the mighty man and they was following the rich people and they was following them but God in his heart gave a message to Jeremiah and he said go tell them not to follow the wise man not to follow the strong man and not to follow the rich man but let him that glory glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me he understandeth and knoweth me. 
that's worth more than the wisdom of this world. It's worth more than the strong people of this world. It's worth more than the riches of this world is to know God, to understand God. But let him that glorieth, glorieth that this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercises loving kindness. Is, is God's loving kindness a light? Yeah. Do you know how we win people to Christ? Through God's loving kindness. That's how we win them to Christ. His loving kindness. When you get saved, did someone quote to you somewhere along the way, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son in the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. We got saved by God's loving kindness. But God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us. That is the loving kindness of God. That is the mercy of God. That is the grace of God. Pouring himself out on Calvary. Shedding his blood upon Calvary. Religion couldn't wash away our sins. But the blood of Jesus can wash away our sins. I'm telling you something right now. There's a great light. And that light is God's loving kindness. It's loving kindness. You know, we don't deserve God's mercy. We don't deserve the second chance, the third chance, the fourth chance, and the fifth chance. But why is it that we get a God in heaven that when we do wrong and we repent of our sin, like David did when he sinned against God with Bathsheba, like David did when he sinned against Uriah, and God, he got down on his knees and said, Be merciful to me, O God, I'm a sinner. And he said his mind was clean, his heart was clean. He had a pure heart and pure Pure soul and his spirit would touch. And then from that day on, boy, I'm going to tell you something. He got with God and God got with him. And mountains were moved, amen. And valleys were filled, amen. And seas were parted, amen. Because he met the almighty God. I'm going to tell you something. If you're going to be changed, and if I'm going to be changed, we're going to need God to let. We get a, the first thing we need to let is God speak to us. And we need to yield to that light of God's loving kindness. Boy, we need to some of that light in our homes today. All the bickering that's going on. All the cutting down that's going on. All, all, all the poison that's going on. And we taught in Sunday school about the word boast. And you can associate, I didn't t- say that because of God. But the word boast has poison to it. Poison related to it. We got poison in our home today. We got poison in our kids today. We got poison in our dads today because they ain't been to Calvary. Because they, they're too busy doing other things. They're too busy getting rich. They're too busy getting strong. They're too busy at the gym. They're too busy at the bank. They're too busy at the books. And they just don't know God. We need to get back to God. We got to get back to loving God in His loving kindness. I'm telling you. This is loving kindness is light, God's light.